All right, so today let's talk about the contradictions of gay and effeminacy. Uh, let's start off with a couple premises. Uh, science says that gay men are a small minority and that uh, they are, and, and by gay they mean same-sex attracted. Uh, you can even add bisexuals to it and it still would be a small minority and that they are effeminate, at least gay men. And uh, you can check out my book uh, and read chapter three for that information. Or you can read this book, Gay Straight and the Reason Why, by Simon LeVay. And uh, he's a neuroscientist. Uh, he himself is gay. And um, he just kind of sums up the evidence uh, that gay men are gender shifted towards the effeminate. Now, some may disagree. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of gay men who would disagree with that, I think, uh, you know, they're, they're being politically correct because they haven't resolved their own issues with that, but whatever. And, of course, I disagree with the idea that uh, only a small minority of men are attracted to other men. Um, and I think most men have a bisexual potential that is repressed by culture. Uh, but the point is that gay men are indeed effeminate. And even if not most, I mean, I think most are. But we can say that there are gay men who are effeminate. And... <clears throat> A lot of the, a lot of those men are attract, or, or they say they want more masculine men. A lot of the times, though, these, these more or less effeminate gay men do end up with, or are attracted to, in the first place, other effeminate men, and that always has struck me as very odd, because if the whole point is, you know, you're gay and you're attracted to other gay men who are effeminate, um, why aren't you attracted to women? I mean, women are sort of feminine, too. And if you say, well, you know, they settle down with, well, same thing with, why, why can't they settle down with women? They're sort of feminine, too. Now, let's look at two, two examples, um, just so I'm not talking completely out of my ass, right? There's a show that I also quoted in, well, I, I referenced in the book, Guerrero, uh, and it's called One Girl, Five Gays. And the premise of the show is you have a rotating cast of about maybe 20 gay guys and they sit around and the, there's the host who's a woman, the girl, who's asking them questions. Um, and I, I made the observation that on this show there's really no masculine gay guys. Uh, some are more effeminate, some are less, but they're all more or less effeminate. Now, as, as it regards to this topic of, of gay men dating other men who are also sort of effeminate, a lot of the guys on the show say they sleep around with each other, they date each other, but they're all kind of effeminate, okay? So keep that in mind. Uh, if we want to look at a couple that everybody knows about, uh, again, I don't have a problem with, with gay effeminacy. I don't really care. I'm just pointing out, I'm just observing this in a neutral sort of way. So you have a uh, another uh, group, uh, well, you have a couple, Dan Savage and his husband, I believe, Terry something, uh, and they're kind of effeminate too. Um, so, the question is, if they are effeminate, if they, uh, so, so Dan Savage is sort of effeminate. You could tell that he's gay just by looking at him, just by seeing him talk. Uh, same, same thing with his boyfriend. Now, if they are effeminate and they're, they say, ooh, I'm attracted to men. Well, but gay men aren't quite, uh, quite uh, as masculine as not gay men. So, if they're willing to, if they like gay men, other effeminate men, or they settle down uh, with them because, you know, nobody's nobody's going to be your perfect uh, mate, so, you know, you're just going to settle on a couple things. But why don't they settle down with women then? It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Um, if they say, I'm gay and I want a man, then why not a woman? Because the man that they end up with are sort of effeminate to begin with. So what would be wrong with a woman? You know, uh, so, you know, for me, for me personally, genitalia is sort of irrelevant. Now, that doesn't mean, you know, I can project that onto everybody else. But, you know, if you're get, how much does a strap on cost? You know, how much does a strap on cost? And it's a pretty crass way of putting it. But if the whole point is, well, the gay guy still has a penis. OK, well, a strap on costs how much? And if you're going to say, oh, but there's still masculine attributes in a gay guy. Well, not as much as, uh, to the same degree that there's masculine attributes in women. So again, it, 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 it does not make any sense to me uh, to say that gay men who settle with effeminate other men, that they are 
that they say, oh, but I'm absolutely not attracted to women. Well, why not? You're, you're proving that you're okay with effeminacy. You're proving that you can settle down with effeminacy. Okay. Uh, so anyways, that, I just wanted to put that out there. I've always thought that was very odd. Um, I mean, I, I guess very few people ask, you know, why are gay men going out with other gay men? Because it's just so obvious, but it's really not. Because if gay men are effeminate themselves, which they are, and they say they like men, but they end up with more or less effeminate men, then they should be just as easily, just as easily end up with effeminate women. Okay. So anyways, I, even if I don't get an answer to this, I would like to know why I'm the only person who, who wants to point this out or who even cares about this stuff. But uh, uh, before I start rambling more, I think this would be a good time to end.